So in this video, we're going to talk about wave plates at an angle. So wave, plate, wave plates at some angle theta. So in the last video, we talked about what happens when you send in light, uh, so light propagating along the z direction into a birefringent crystal, or uh, one where the phase, or the refractive index along one direction, one polarization direction, is not the same as the other. So if we had Y polarized light that propagated with a certain refractive index, which we said was the slow refractive index or the larger refractive index. And if we had X polarized light, it propagated with a different refractive index. So we call that the fast axis or the fast refractive index. And this is smaller than the slow refractive index. So slow ref refractive index is bigger uh, fast refractive index is smaller. And this just is because of the phase velocity. So the light uh, that propagates down the fast axis has a higher velocity. But now what if we rotate this crystal? So what if the slow axis and the fast axis of the crystal are no longer aligned with our X and our Y axes? So let's say we're rotating this crystal around Z. So we're turning it counterclockwise a little bit. Let's see what happens to the light we send in. And in particular, let's look at, uh, let's, emet, let's examine this plane because we're not really interested in what's happening along the z-axis. Light's just propagating down that direction. So we have in that plane our x-axis and our y-axis, which haven't changed. But now our slow axis, uh, or let's first draw our fast axis because that's the one closer to x. Our fast axis and our slow axis are tilted with respect to x and y. And they're tilted by some angle, I'll call it theta. Now we know what happens to electric fields which are polarized along the fast axis. They just propagate down z as if they had a refractive index and f. And similarly, we know what happens to electric fields polarized along the slow axis. They just propagate along z as if they had a refractive index and s. So it would be really nice if we could figure out what our electric field components are along the fast axis and the slow axis. So if I had, for example, an X polarized electric field, let's say it has some component EX, it would be really nice what to, kn to know how to decompose that to, into some component uh, along the fast axis and some component along the slow axis. Because if I had those components, then I could very easily just say, well, EF, just multiply that by the e to the minus j shenanigans. ES, multiply that by uh, e to the minus j other shenanigans involving NS. So NS, NF. But we saw how to do that in a previous video. So if we had purely X polarized light, our Jones vector is just one zero, uh, then we could figure out what the components were along a rotated axis by multiplying that by a certain matrix. And we saw that that was just uh, cosine of theta, sine theta, minus sine theta, and cosine of theta. And this is the rotation matrix, or rotation by minus theta, if you're familiar with this linear transform. And so if we multiply this matrix, then our one zero vector just becomes cosine of theta and minus sine of theta. So we, we interpret this a little differently as a vector because this slot corresponds to the, com the, uh, the fast component, so the component along the fast axis, and this slot corresponds to the component along the slow axis, whereas before this was along the x-axis and this was along the y-axis. And so now we can use the Jones matrices that we figured out before. So let's take that of our, our half wave plate, which we said was one, zero, zero, minus one. And I wanna take that just cause it's simpler than the, than the quarter wave plate. So to figure out what happens to my electric field at the output or just at the edge of my crystal, all I have to do is multiply my input Jones vector. Let's say that was one, zero, first by our rotation matrix, uh, our rotation by minus theta, and then I just multiply by our half wave plate matrix. So this gives us the answer as to what our electric field looks like at the output. 
Uh, unfortunately, it's in terms of the fast axis and the slow axis. Uh, so the, the vector that we're writing is now in terms of a different coordinate system, and that's kind of awkward. So we'd like to switch back to our original coordinate system, and that we can do, again, just by multiplying or by rotating by the opposite direction, so rotating by an angle theta. This gives us back our answer in terms of our uh, x and y coordinates, which is what we want. So we can ask what this whole matrix is, uh, rather than just assuming it is act, is assuming it's applied to some known Jones vector, we can ask what this total matrix is and figure out how it'll affect any Jones vector or any polarization. And the, the matrix for that actually turns out to be pretty simple. So it's uh, cosine of two theta, sine of two theta, uh, sine two theta, minus cosine two theta. Sorry, there should be a two here. They're all two thetas. And now here's something really interesting. Uh, if you plug in theta equals 45 degrees to this matrix, what you get is this one, 0, 1, 1, 0. So if we look at the first column vector, this matrix is taking 1, 0 light and turning it into 0, 1 light. So we had x polarized light and it becomes y polarized. Similarly, if we had uh, y polarized light or our vector 0, 1, that turns into x polarized light, 1, 0. And so this half wave plate oriented at 45 degrees actually swaps your polarization. So x goes to y and y goes to x. Now you could do the same exact thing. You could play the same exact set of tricks with the quarter wave plate. So you rotate by theta, you multiply by the quarter wave plate, you rotate by minus theta, and you can get the overall matrix for this uh, this transform as well. So this is just a quarter wave plate at some angle theta. And if you plug in theta equals 45 degrees to the result that you get here, you'll get a similarly interesting matrix, which looks like this, one uh, i i one. And you've got a factor of one over root two out front. So you need to do a little bit of algebra to get here, but this is the end result. And so what does this do to x polarized light? Well, it turns x polarized light or vector one zero into our Jones vector one i, which is just right hand polarized light. Similarly, it takes our x vector or our, sorry, our, our y polarized light zero one. So this is y, this is x and turns it into left hand polarized light with which has a Jones vector of i one. And you might be like, wait, wait, uh, wait a minute. I thought that left-hand polarized light had a vector of one minus i. But you can get one minus i just by multiplying this vector, this vector i one, just multiply by minus i. So these just have a relative phase, but they're still both twisting in the same left-handed helix. It's just one is off by a certain phase relative to the other, but they're qualitatively the same uh, same type of light, same type of polarization. And you could do other cute things too. So if you set theta equals minus 45 degrees, instead you'd end up with this matrix, one minus i minus i1. And so here you can turn x polarized light into left hand polarized, left hand circularly polarized light. And similarly, y polarized light into right hand polarized light. So you can do all sorts of clever tricks uh, with these quarter and half wave plates. Now we can flip their polarization states. So we can flip X and Y. We can turn X and Y into either left hand or right hand polarized light. Uh, and with, with these tricks in mind, we can do all sorts of fun things, especially because we've also got linear polarizers, which can kill a component. Uh, so they can kill X polarized light or they can kill Y polarized light. And the reason this is so cool is that different materials respond differently to linearly polarized light versus circularly polarized light. So we can do all sorts of fun tricks by swapping polarizations. Beam splitters are a great example. So if you have an optical beam uh, and you polarize it, you can make it so that the beam splitter initially will transmit all of your light 
and then you have a wave plate in the path and then maybe it reflects from some object and then comes back and it changes its polarization twice. So now it's in a different polarization state and you can get 100% of that to reflect from your beam splitter. So you can do some really cool things with polarization that you couldn't do otherwise. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.